All right. So let's continue. The next session is by Emery on BPF QDisk. Hi, uh, I'm Emery from ByteDance. And today I'm going to um, give you an update on QDisk and also um, discuss some of the BPF changes. So I will first um, show you some background, and then we'll discuss some BPF changes. And later, we'll discuss the um, QDisk K-Funks. And finally, if we have time, then we'll also, on, we're also going to um, look at some examples and the evaluation. So the motivation of BPF QDisk is similar to SCADEX. And to quote um, um, Alexi's closing remark, it is to enable, enable users to innovate in QDisk and beyond. And so we hope that by providing a flexible and easy to use uh, BPF QDisk infrastructure, BPF um, QDisk users will be able to explore different scheduling, packet scheduling policies or um, algorithm quickly. So to make it, um, so um, the recent development in BPF actually already makes the flexibility part possible. So we have the relaxed uh, BPF loop, loops and we also have uh, BPF graph collections. So those are already very powerful and sufficient enough to implement um, package scheduling algorithms and also the data structures. And to make it easy to use, we only require the user to implement the core, core logic. So if we look at um, today's ops, there we only require the users to um, have the ID, and in order to have a um, functional queue disk, you just need to implement in queue and DQ. And this should, should get your um, traffic flowing. And also, we, uh, we want to implement the mountain part for users because those are the similar parts for different queuing uh, disciplines. So we, we think we can hide those parts from users. Specifically, we, we provide um, watchdog and a uh, queue disk class hash. So they will be um, updated by the predefined class operations uh, implemented by BPF QDisk uh, infrastructure. And then the user will be able to leverage them using um, QDisk K-Funks. Um, the other thing when designing BPF QDisk is to take care of the lifecycle of escape offs. So this is important because um, if they are not taken off, it will just uh, break the kernel. So there are three um, possible situations. So in the in queue, if you neither in queued or drop the escape off, then it's and and then you return the in queue um, BPF program, then it's just a reference leak, and like you will have uh, you have no memory like in a very short amount of time, and also if the user are able to duplicate a reference from the same SKB and then just the queue one. Then the one still the one escape of in the queue will become a dangling pointer, and that's also not good. And finally, um, this is one problem in some pre in previous RFC is that um, the escape of the user basically can just make up in a invalid escape buff pointer and return to the kernel and crash the kernel. So for um, a and C, this will be taken care of by reference k pointer because the semantics, semantics just match. And also for um, and for the case B, uh, we plan to um, take care of this uh, by enforcing a unique reference semantic. Uh, before going into the details, I'm just going to um, like explain this, describe the status. So I picked picked up the QDisk work um, late last year and we submit uh, v7 this year. The goal was of v7 is just to make it run, provide some running examples, and also try to take care of the lifecycle SKB, although that was not successful. So in v8, we switched to struct apps because it's just a better uh, framework. You don't need to create another new user space API and make it very hard to update. And also with struct apps, you have the um, it supports BPF link directly, so why not? So we switched to startups, but before making uh, more exploration into the QDisk, we want to make BPF startups uh, support QDisk 
um, in a better way. And so we are going to look at four, two changes to BPF, specifically for Strokops, and the other two um, um, for other things. All right. So the first one is the, so the, the first two was about um, are about the life cycle of escape of, and so the first part of the SKB life cycle in QDIS is to get a reference K pointer, and the existing way to get a reference K pointer mostly is just using another uh, K func, but this does not work well with the unique reference semantic that we want to enforce later, because if we are able to call the uh, reference acquire pointer multiple times, then you will be able to get uh, multiple refer more references. So that's not good. And so the way we um, solve it is to use um, stop function for struct ops. Um, uh, yeah, so when, uh, can you explain again why exactly this KF acquire <coughs> approach doesn't work, why you want to make this unique reference that only one is allowed? Like SKB has like internal like ref count, so you can just like keep incrementing it and dropping it. So why exactly you want it to be this unique? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm thinking, so you, you, if you ha have multiple reference to the same escape off, and then you put them into the BPF list as a queue, and then you dequeue one, then, oh, it's because you because want when you, acquire you, you, you want yeah you want to put you want to reuse the uh, list uh, node and RB three is part of the that a part of the SKB structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and we don't do actually. So it's not like uh, so in QDIS it's not like other uh, BPF use case where the SKB is solely owned by the QDisk. So I think that's a, a little bit different. We don't increase the reference count or do anything with that. Yeah, but <coughs> we also like it's it's also like I've looked at the patches and it seems that this. Uh, if you go into the next slide, mm -hmm. wh what you're doing, this kind of stuff supposed to like exist already. It's kind of. Um, like <coughs> the way the obgenu, what obgenu is returning, like obgenu potentially is also this like unique, like the one without this BPF ref count stuff. So we already have this concept of the unique, uh, uh, unique object. In what way do you might like explain? Anyway, yeah, continue. Sorry, yeah, let's. Probably will be easier to. Uh, okay, so we can like chat, over yeah, off list or over email. Yeah, sure. So um, just the way it is right now, it's being solved is to introduce a sub function that will an annotate the argument, so that we will acquire a reference k pointer directly by reading the reading the argument here, and we only allow this once. So that's part of the uh, ref acquire semantic, and. And any other subsequent access, accesses will be denied. And you might ask how this will solve the unique reference. So my answer is that the ref acquire itself by itself will not solve the um, unique reference thing. It needs to, needs to be combined with other things. So in this case, we don't allow any other means to duplicate the reference on a, an SK buff. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was gonna say that I think to the second bullet point there, it feels like pointer unique is something that's more appropriate than having mm -hmm. um, the verifier like enforce a reference count of one because reference counts, the whole, like the idea with a reference count is it's explicitly enabled to allow multiple people to reference a pointer, right? Mm -hmm. So it feels like it's probably a good idea for us to have a completely separate idea of explicit ownership and like, Ref object ID is, isn't even isn't even used. Um, so yeah, we'd have to teach the verifier to like assign unique ownership, but I don't think it would be like I think it would be separate from ref object ID. It should be at least. Yep. All right. Any other comments on this? Okay. So maybe we'll need to tweak this a little bit. 
And then the second part of the um, life cycle of SKB is to return this to the kernel. And if we look at the signature of the Q function, it's part of the it's it's the return type. And right now, struct ops doesn't re allow like returning a um, K pointer. So we in our uh, la latest patch set, we try to enable this. And the way it has been implemented is, um, so there are two steps. So because the, um, on the, when checking the um, exit path in the verifier, there are two things. The first, is, the first thing is to check the reference leak. And what happened next is to check the, the return code. And what we're doing here, I think, effectively is um, leaking a reference uh, leaking a reference here so we do some checks in the check reference leak so if the types in the re uh, return register matches the signature then we will allow um, this single reference leak and later in the check return code we do um, two checks so the first thing is um, if it's not a local pointer, if, and also it's in its own modified form, we will allow this to be returned. And in this case, we will also re allow return a null pointer because that's the use case in um, QDisk. So there is a um, assumption of maybe null things, and this might not work for others. And right now, there's no way to annotate return in stop functions, so maybe there's something needs to be um, addressed, or maybe just modify the kernel part, modify the um, user of struct ops code, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's annoying that there is no <laughs> name of the return, so we cannot use our underscore underscore hack for return values. In this case, probably just another, like this also works, uh, but probably clean and to have a flag, like new key of flag that would say that this is, these are the semantics. Like, okay. Because it's less surprising probably, but mm -hmm. this is minor. Yep. Sorry, I think um, I don't want to derail the conversation, but I'm a little bit confused. So this is the struct ops callback that's returning the value? Mm -hmm. There's no way to annotate a struct ops callback, right? Wouldn't this just be, I mean, you can check it in like the verifier callback, but this is just something that core kernel has to account for. Like, I guess the verifier has to ensure the kernel that the return value is what it expects. It's like you haven't mucked with a pointer, is that the idea? And what's the what's your um, like final question? So, so like in in SCEDX, <clears throat> we have um we have a whole bunch of struct ops callbacks that can return values, mm -hmm. and we just validate them all in the caller. So like mm -hmm. if you return an invalid CPU, we'll kill we'll kick the scheduler out. If you return yes. whatever, right? It's um, yeah. So QDisk is not like um so we're in a different situation. So in QDisk, we are not inventing another structures for. Um, start us to, to replace. We're directly using QDIX ops, so we don't we cannot do any things like after the operators. So that might I have some I have some other um, I have some other proposal, but we can discuss it later. Maybe that sure. will help. Yeah, that's that sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's for the lifecycle of, of escape off, and the second part is to support adding escape off to BPF graph directly, and this is for two reasons. First is the performance overhead, and second is for ergonomic. So if we look at the enqueue in v7, because we cannot enqueue um, add escape off into kernel objects into BPF list directly, so we need to first allocate a local object, do some ex but uh, exchange that k pointer into the local objects, and then add that local objects to the BPF list, and that's a memory allocation in the fast pass, so that's not obviously not, not ideal, and also there's a lot of code in, in order to just enqueue, so the goal is to just add the escape off into BPF list. And um, of course the obvious way is to, is to invent another set of um, escape off specific kfunk in order to do this, but I think that might complicate 
the whole verifier logic. So I try to see if we can just support that using existing kfunk. And I think the answer is yes. So I did it in two, two steps. The, so the first step is to teach the BPF to allow adding kernel objects to collections. And the second um, step is to resolve the incompatibility between SKBuff and BPFRB node. So the first step is um, a bit more trivial. So in order to support like KFUN, graph KFUNCs, you need to have um, structure, metadata, and so we need to generate that for kernel and kernel modules. And there are a lot of BTF types in the BT, uh, kernel BTFs, and it doesn't make sense to take a lot of time to parse, parse them to search for special BTF fields during boot time. And so we took a, um, a lawless approach, so we only allow the kernel to search for uh, the, some specific data structure uh, types. In this case, it's SKBuff. And for kernel modules and program BTF, that's all. Like, that's all. And the second thing is to teach BTF and the verifier th that now we, the kernel, uh, th the graph can contain kernel objects. And the final step is to, in the verifier, to al allow this to happen. Excuse me. So the second step is to resolve the incompatibility. Um, is there any questions so far? No, just <clears throat> we're just uh, so this part of the patch actually looked looked pretty good to me. Uh, my only like suggestion was just to make it more robust potentially. Um, mm -hmm. Add another flag. So this memalog we're using to say that this kind of objects that can be put. And so in this case some other flag, not memalog, something that is like kernel alloc, whatever, like name, name in his heart, just to differentiate. Because currently, like, mm -hmm. there could be something like subtle in all the checks, because it will be just, as you said, this your line, last sentence is saying, and normal PTR, PTR to BTF ID, if it's like with extra flag, that specifically was allow listed for skip off, then it's will be easier to like follow uh, the path through the verifier to make sure that it's all safe everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. And also, when I was looking at the verifier code, I've, I think there are some things that need, can be done for the trusted K pointer, uh, trusted pointer semantics, because it, it feels like there are multiple things that's, uh, that's what, that we're doing to ensure the pointer is trusted, so, but that's another topic. So the second step is to resolve the incompatibility. And why is there an incompatibility is that in SKPuff, in the first union, we have the RB node. But that, so that is the largest uh, member in that union. But PPF RP node is larger because there is a owner field. And the, why, the reason the owner field is there is because we want to support um, shared ownership so that we don't have some racy situations. And the way I try to solve this is to reintroduce, not in reintroduce, but just to introduce another version of exclusive ownership. So the way I did this is to have two new types. They just simply wrap around the RB node and list head. And this is just for BTF annotation, and we have some do some checks to ensure that we can not get multiple reference um, on this type of nodes, and we also allow these two um, exclusive version to appear in the sample set because they are now exclusive. And once we did this, the graph K function can skip ownership checks. And that's how I did. But there is something that still needs to be addressed. The first thing is we need to restore escape of dev because that happens to sit in the same union. And I'm not sure how this can be solved. Right now, what's on my mind is to do doing some program fix up during verification and to rewrite the program. But that sounds a bit too much. And another solution maybe to have argument dependent polymorphic kfunk or but 
I really want to. I really don't want to go to the last like solution to have SKB flavor graph, graph K funks because I don't know if in the future there will be other kernel objects that w that also wants to be queued into BPF graphs. So just wondering if there are other suggestions for this. So apparently, so right now, I, what I have is, I have another kfunk, which is called BPFQ this XKB set dev, that will restore the dev, but apparently we cannot rely on the user to call this function every time when there is a uh, remove from graph kfunk. Yeah, but if there is another way, then I might try the first solution on my mind. So that's one. All right. And so if there's no other feedback. So have you, uh, so dev needs to be restored because of what? Because it's a union, right? Yeah, it's uh, a union. Have you considered just like moving things around in this kebab? What's that? Have you considered just moving the fields around in this kebab so dev doesn't get scratched? Okay, I'll try, I'll try to think of that. Maybe it's an option, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's, so the next thing is just a proposal. So I want to see something like entry or exit routine for struct ops because I think what we want to do for struct op is just not, is not simply allow the user to implement kernel using BPF. I think we want to do more for them. And in our case, we're maintaining the class hash, watchdog, and yeah, class, those two. And so we want to do something by default for different operators. And it's not a um, make or break situation, it's just, um, so for example, for BPFQ this init, we want to init the watchdog and set up the class hash. And right now we, we just insert that function by comparing the class up and hard coded there, but that means other structure, uh, other QDIS will also like go through this, and maybe that's not a big deal, but it might be a thing good to have, and this might also solve the um, maybe now return things because now we can have something that always happen in the entry or exit, but just a proposal. Just wondering if this makes sense. Uh, this part, <coughs> I think you will cover it later in some of the slides. So the only thing that was like really stood out as something to me as unusual in this one of the neat things, mm -hmm. you allow this uh, classful Q disk when you have like a special K funks or like the whole thing. So that looks abusable. Like I don't see how you can make it safe. Okay. At the end, even this like pre op stuff, it's handling some of it, but have a kefong that does this <coughs> um, second level like Q disk, the classful stuff, it seems to me to not do that, like to let like user space, you know, like if it wants to create this hierarchy of the Q disk, to do that in user space, netlink, whatever, and as a BPF uh, struct ops would only be like really like okay. a different level, do only like in QDQ. Okay. So uh, in, okay. in this case, I don't think you will need that uh, pre-op, post-op either. Okay, I, I think that answer like the question I will ask later, <laughs> but yeah. All right, so this is the QDIS funk, and you, you already answered one of the questions I will raise. But so we have first a temporary hack to restore the SKP dev and also two for classification, and there were some questions around if we need to support existing TC filters, and I have no strong opinions, but I will do more testing if I want to include the, include the exist, uh, TC classify. And for releasing reference on SKPOF, we have two versions. The one is for, it's also serve as a um, destructor, and also program can, can use that if they are not in in queue function, because in in queue function, we the kernel will pass you a two free escape buff list so that you can batch the uh, release later when you release RT, um, the lock. And fourth, um, we have throttling um, K 
K-Funk for throttling. And finally, those are the one that I have, that I want to. Um, so I think you already say that we just let the user decide what to do in the user space. So maybe yeah, we don't so like uh, this uh, could just create child and find class yeah. seems to be like <coughs> a danger zone. Mm -hmm. Like there is no like I don't see like why you would really need that because it's like a one-time operation at the need of the Q disk. Like when you create a new class well, yes, you create a child. You don't really need this operation. At least I don't see why you need this operation to be done by the kernel. I understand that all other classful QGIS, that is how they do it as part of init. But I think like like there should be a way to like do it all of this like from user space with a netlink when you kind of create in the QDisk, doing all of the init stuff, creating the scheduling watchdog, including creation of the child uh, classes. So because 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 also what what this does not do yet it seems to me that you, you, there is no ability to add this ops to like child's um, child QDisk. so that's probably you would want eventually as well like this in QDQ the only on the parent right so in the internal one at least an example that I saw in the last patch you create a child and child only standard like five or I think or B five or whatever it is so and there is no like extra in QDQ. But if you want to make like truly programmable like multi-level, you would need like in Q in, in QDQ to the parent and QDQ to the in the child too. So those those will be like different struct tops. So if you then use user space like creation time, you create the whole structure, the whole layout of all the like Q disk, the mm -hmm. tree of the Q disks. Uh, root and uh, children, and then you put whatever in QDQ that you want as the struct tops VPF progs. That, that also makes sense. So the, the idea of this was to allow the QDisk in need to pop up the topology right away without relying on the user, because the scheduling algorithm is done by QDisk. And if you, re you need to rely on the user to set, set up the topology correctly, then that also seems to be a bit error porn. For example, in, in prior QQDisk, there are um, different bands. And that's th those bands are there when you init the prior QDisk. And for in this case, if we don't have this, sure. we don't have that. Yes, you have a point, but <clears throat> maybe then declare what it's supposed to be more like in a declarative specification, some sort of like spec of how this hierarchy is supposed to look like instead of doing it explicitly as a sequence of commands. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I, I'll try to work on that part later. And so let's see if we have time. Yeah, we, st we still have time. So we can just look at one simple example of how a BPF QDIS will look like. This is a BPF FIFO. And I just hide those function body away from you. So we have a BPF list serving as the FIFO. And just need to implement in Q and DQ in order for it to work. And in the FIFO, simple, straightforward, except I ignore the set that here. But we should do set that otherwise, which is not work. So that's it. In supporting adding escape off into the uh, BPF collection makes the BPF QDisk more performant. So when we compare uh, BPF QDisk implemented with V7 and V8, there is a 7.6% uh, throughput increase. And it cannot be that V8 is faster than the kernel, no? I, I know. So I, those, I have a disclaimer earlier. So all these tests are just simple hyperf to a QDisk on a loopback. So doing some production tests is also like my priority in the next, uh, next few patch set once the BPF part stabilized. And so to, to recap, so we have now BPF QDIS is now re, um, implemented using startups with some proposed BPF changes. And I think BPF QDIS will make the development um, easier and also iterate faster. And also there's a, no new um, opportunities for using BPF uh, maps to communicate with other components to um, realize new applications or optimizations. 
And so for the next batch set, uh, once the BPF part is stabilized, then I will try to do more production tests. And also we need to add KFUNC availability checks, support QT st stats, and see if we want to enable more QT ops and up support updating stock ops, QT, QT ops. So that's all. And I'm happy to take questions. So this looks like really good. Uh, I wish you send the uh, ROC <coughs> a bit sooner than just last week before the LSFMM because I don't know like how many people were able to actually look at it. It's a heavy patch. It's uh, especially like all the verifier bits around introduction of this new exclusive <coughs> slash ref counted stuff is not easy. Uh, for but like. Overall, I think the patch set's in a good shape, so my recommendation would be to, instead of like explore new stuff and new ops, to reduce it to something that is uh, that we can land. So like okay. make it, instead of me making it the full, complete, complete with like everything mm -hmm. that you want to do, make it simpler that it can be like reviewed and landed step by step. Makes sense. Makes because like comparing to first um, seven versions, this one I think is on a good pass. Uh, there are, like, of course, like, pure, like, small issues here and there, but overall, I think it's good. The the question I have I, uh, that I maybe missed on the slides, uh, the <coughs> uh, my understanding that you are relying on the reset uh, callback to actually free the elements that in the queue. So this also is not safe, right? So imagine this reset is not implemented properly, and the VPF program, instead of doing reset, is doing nothing. Then all of these SKBs, they will be stuck in the RB trees uh, that not freed by anything, right? So I think this needs uh, destructors, the way we do like destructors for uh, task struct and CPU mask, so that reset is not necessary. I'm not sure how easy it would be to do. Probably some extra annotations, like that only this particular like RB3 link list are allowed to hold the SKB, so that <coughs> when the, this map is being destroyed, that all the destructors for SKB get called, and all of the SKBs are finally freed. Because like relying on the user to implement reset is just like mm -hmm. not safe. Yeah, right now there's no guarantee. Yeah, yeah so that might be something we need to be clear of. Right, so. Can you elaborate on this temporary uh, SKB def? Yeah, hack? So I didn't quite follow why it is. All right. So in this union, def is also there, and when you do in queue or dq, or when you do in queue, it will just re erase the def there and put rb rb node or it's there. So when you remove that from the list or rb tree, you need to restore def. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Okay. I, maybe I can read the patch, but where where do you restore the dev from? Um, so right now we're relying on the user to do the right thing. So that will be after you do the pop from. So right after, pop, not maybe right after, just before you return. Um. So this example doesn't have the call, or or it should. Yeah, there is no. So unfortunately, I include the wrong version. Let's see if we can see. I, I guess the other thing we just need to be sure, like if, if the call is not made and there's a null pointer in the SKB dev, that the dev DQ of the Q disk is perfectly happy to not panic, right? All right. It, it might be, right? Am I making sense? Yeah, because it's a union, like it has to be restored, of course. Like it's and this is obviously not safe. Like yes. that was discussed. And after DQ, like SKB dev will be a valid pointer, but not to the device. <laughs> because it's a union. It will be pointer to whatever something. Right, so so what's the plan to enforce that? Are you uh, right now I'm thinking of doing one as to like according yeah, to Alexis' suggestion, trying to see if we can re reorder, like change the layout to so that we don't overwrite that. Um, the other thing is, the, the other approach is to do uh, BPF program rewrite during the verification and insert that k func automatically. So you would do like at the end of the tail call, you would, or at the end of the function call, you'd force the write, yep. or add a call or something, yep. the k func call? Yep. 
That's a bit intimidating, but was. All right. I don't know. Let's hope that there's some extra bits in, <laughs> in the SKB. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there is. The bits. Wait. And those uh, release functions, so th that like the the release key functions that you had, right? I mean. I'm not quite sure on the internals. Is it that they set the flag and then once you're out of the QDS, they release everything, or do you actually free the SKB out of your program? So, so for SKB release, it just use consume SKB. So I think that's being released immediately. And for SKB drop, it will take the two free list in in queue. So that's a deferred free. That one's deferred. Okay. What's the concern, Daniel? What? What's the concern again? Sorry. Uh, no, I was just wondering about use of the free, like if if, if that SKB, if that specific SKB, like how can you ensure that you don't trigger one? Like, yeah. But it's the same same as all other like release. It's like release. That's it. Pointer is dead afterwards. Maybe uh, sorry, Tim. One thing I also didn't understand. I looked at the patches. You seem to be handling all the spin locks explicitly in the Q disk, and I don't remember FQ having any locking explicitly in the in QDQ. Maybe you, Daniel, know. It's like that does stood out because like so many lock unlock uh, stuff inside. I remember looking at maybe two years ago all the multi Q stuff, but I don't remember having. Uh, Explicit locking. So maybe, maybe I'll ask you on the list, and then we can discuss. But if you have something from the top of your head, I don't have anything. Okay. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, because that 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 looked weird to me a bit. It's. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.